I'm Haley. I'm Laura. And this is Insight at the Berg. All right, today we have some really awesome topics to cover today. We have community service, 50 shades of gray, and, and Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. So, in honor of Valentine's Day, with all the hearts and love and chocolate and roses and teddy bears and single ladies, um, we're going to go over a little bit of history and all this information we pulled from the History Channel, so thank you very much. Learn so, something new every day. You do. So, while it's believed that Valentine's Day is celebrated for St. Valentine, apparently within the uh, Christian church, there's actually several saints that were named Valentine. Mm -hmm. And the idea was to celebrate his death in the Ides of February, but actually um, at the same time was the festival that the Romans celebrated, and what they did is they would sacrifice a goat for fertility and a dog for purification. I don't see how a dog is purified, but whatever. And then they would allow women to like stroke the hide to become fertile. And, oh wait, get this. All the women would put their name in a big urn and the men would just pop it out and say, oh hey, I'm your boyfriend for a year. For a year, mind you. Not like, like you two are now destined for life. It's a year. I thought that was strange. Yeah, it takes the whole new year, new you to a whole new level. Mind you, this is a pagan holiday, <laughs> not just Roman, it's pagan. Yeah. So, um, and, and beyond that, what happened was the Christian church felt that it was kind of wrong to have a pagan holiday, kind of like that. So they put the Valentine's um, death honor in the Ides of February to Christianize the pagan holiday, which I feel happens a lot. Quite often. I mean, look at Christmas and then this, and I just I feel like the Christian church was like everything was wrong. But then they're like, but we still do it anyway, so we'll change it a little to make it okay. Yeah. Um, what I found really interesting, though, while looking up the history is this was back, like, A.D. 270, way, way, way back. Um, but when it got towards more the Middle Ages, that's when we finally started seeing that February 14th was celebrated for love. And the only reason why it became that was because it was the beginning of the birds mating season. And birds mating season, love, go hand in hand. Apparently. So we went from celebrating a death to um, trying to be fertile and, you know, get our new bachelor, basically. And now we're, we're devoting our time to birds mating. Yes, my question is though, what happens to the put your name in, draw a name out, and have a boyfriend for a year? I actually think that'd be kind of funny. Be like, oh, that's your boyfriend for the year. If you don't like it, it's okay, it's only for a year. Uh, yeah. Next year you can change. Just put your name back in there and you're good. I like, I think that would be <laughs> hilarious. Like, maybe not like boyfriend, girlfriend birthday, but like if like some group on campus is like, oh, we're gonna do that and that's gonna be like your pen pal for the year, or that's gonna be like your, you're like, Secret Santa buddy or something, you know what I mean? And it's like you're gonna get gifts the entire year. You're gonna be cool. I don't. I think that'd be fun. I think actually, what's interesting is um, seeing that tradition. I know my high school actually did this thing called love match or data match or something. You would have to go through this questionnaire, and then if you paid, I think a dollar or five, something like that, you would get a list of people from your own class of who you match up with, and then a list of people from other classes. So I guess it's kind of the same idea. You don't just randomly put your name in an urn. But um, I know that a lot of people with eHarmony and love or Match.com, I mean, they're kind of the same thing. You put your name out there and you pick which one you want, and you're not, you don't have to marry them. If I did that in my high school, my results would come back nothing. <laughs> I highly doubt that. It was funny. It took In my high school, maybe. It, it took Here, maybe not. My high school is kind of lame. Really? It took no offense to anybody who no. was my high school. <laughs> it took about three years for my high school sweetheart and I to match up, which is is, is kind of sad. You know, it, I got matched up with his brother every time, but him, no, I never got matched up with him, <laughs> which is really kind of funny. That is funny. Um, so beyond that, there's actually kind of 
cool fun facts that come from Valentine's Day. So because now Valentine's Day is a commercialized holiday, yes. not just a pagan holiday. It's Thank you, Hallmark. <laughs> I love your singing cards, and they're red and vibrant and fun. Speaking of which, that is one of the most popular gifts: greeting cards. Yes. Um, there's also candy, flowers, an evening out, jewelry, clothing, gift cards. You know the huge. And what I find kind of interesting is that um, among the flowers, 61% of men are more likely to give flowers than women. But then when it comes to candy, more women are likely to give it, which I found interesting because I felt like it's kind of a guy like, oh, hey, here's some chocolate. But actually more women buy chocolate, probably for themselves. I do. Okay. Here, here's my spiel on that. Okay. More guys are going to buy flowers for girls because in our society, we think girls flowers. Well, girls want flowers. Um... More girls are going to buy candy for their guys because it's Valentine's Day. Girls like, what do we do for the guy? Well, guys like to eat. We're going to get them candy. I know that's what I'm doing. Another thing I found interesting, too, is that um, an evening out, I figured, would be more popular than greeting cards, and actually that was really? incorrect. Well, um, evening out was about 39% males, 36% females, which kind of makes sense. It's really close, but still, it's really not that much. And um, the other one that I kind of found interesting was jewelry. That actually women, 9% of them buy jewelry. I guess it's not, I guess I'm the kind of person where if, if I get jewelry, I'm not really for that. So, And then flowers. Okay, here's my question about the flowers. Okay. How does a flower signify love? I understand they're pretty, but they die. Here's our love, and it's going to die. You might as well buy a plant, so at least it has time to grow, and it symbolizes love a little better I don't want to bur your bu burst your bubble, but flowers are a plant. I know, but they die <laughs> once they're, like, off the plant. They're, you know what I mean? Plant, yeah. I'm saying, um, like, if you're going to get your woman a, a, a rose, buy her a rose bush. And then it's like, yeah. oh, hey, look, it's growing and it's flourishing like our relationship. Not a single rose, and it's going to die in a week. I'm sorry. Well, I know as a college kid I don't have room for a rose bush. So well, that wouldn't be practical. Roses. But um, I think a lot of the reasoning behind that is like each, there's like different flowers that symbolize different things. You know what I mean? Like, But some, they die. We're friends until this dies. I love well, you until this dies. I don't know. There's also, you could do that cliche <laughs> thing where it's like you get like a dozen roses and you put a fake one in and it's like, I love you to the last one dies. I've and never heard that. Not that is really? Creative. Yes. I thought that was a really cliche thing. I thought everyone knew about that. I didn't, but I also live under a rock like Patrick. Yeah. So um, another really cool thing is for those of you who are single, specifically ladies, apparently there are 119 single men that have never been married, widowed, or divorced to every 100 single women in their 20s. So of these men, they're about in their 20s, and the women are about their 20s as well. So there's going to be about 19 men left over. Sorry, guys, but women, y'all can have your pick. Yeah. That just goes to show that if you're not in a relationship and you want to be in a relationship, just go for it. Make that first move. Yes. It's the 21st century. Girls can make the first move. Of course. <coughs> All right, our next big topic today is Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, it's happening. It is coming out on Valentine's Day, which I guess is, is kind of cool because, you know, for those of you who are single or you just don't want to be with your man that day, hey, you can go celebrate it with the girlfriends and watch your um, fantasies come to life. So the history behind uh, Fifty Shades of Grey is it started out as a fan fiction and evolved into a trilogy. And according to the New York Times, uh, by about February 26, 2014, the book Fifty Shades of Grey sold over 100 million copies. Worldwide, and you know, books like Twilight, Harry Potter also fulfilled that kind of accomplishment. So, with this kind of success and this large of a fan base, they decided to bring the fictional story to life and put it on the silver screen. And the film also stars Jamie Dornan and as Christian Grey, as well as Dakota Johnson as Anastasia Steele. She also goes by Anna in the book. And, again, this will be on Valentine's Day. I think that the Cinemark and Tiffin is allowing, like, a midnight showing on Thursday night or something like that. I don't know. I'm going with the first showing. Okay. So, you said it started out as a fan fiction. Do we know from what 
the fandom it's from? Twilight. Oh, really? Yes. Interesting. I didn't know that. There's actually, there are a lot of books on the market nowadays that started out as fan fiction and now are becoming huge. Um, I don't know if you knew that or not. You know, what's really cool about fan fiction, too, is um, did you know that half of Star Trek was basically written by people who made their own fan fiction zines? So yeah. they would, and it was actually middle, middle class or middle aged housewives that were writing these. They oh, would yeah. write, and that's where the love interest came in. It was, you know, the middle aged women that were writing them. And I just find it interesting that fan fiction has so much power because so many people like what the story already is, and then someone's like, oh, hey, here's my version of it. I, I feel like fan fiction gets discredited a lot because they're, because fan fiction is where anybody can go and write a story that involves a fandom of some sort, whether that's a book, a movie, celebrity, whatever. Um, so, like, there's going to be bad writers out there, and there are going to be people who are like, just write something that's just completely ridiculous, makes no sense. And those are the fan fictions that I think get popularized um, or get talked about. But there's like a lot of really good, either aspiring writers who like write fan fiction as like a way to keep up with writing every day or as like they have a story idea and that's how they, like there's a lot of credible authors that do fan fiction. Um, do you know John Green? Or have you heard of John Green? He no. wrote um, Fault in Our Stars, uh. um, and he has a ton of books out. He's also a very successful YouTuber, um, but he actually he writes fan fiction every once in a while. He actually he gets a lot of his story ideas from reading fan fiction. Oh. So I just I feel like it gets discredited a lot when yeah. I, feel, I feel like there's more to it. I I will argue as I'm actually reading the book right now and. It, the writing is not up to par as far as a piece of literature. I would never suggest it to like look back. And I think what's going to make it timeless is because of the fan base it has. But as far as literature, I, I don't think it deserves right. a whole lot of credit. But it's a very entertaining story. I am currently on page, I think, 126. And some events have happened. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure how I feel about them, but it, it's really interesting. And uh, honestly, I feel like thus far of the first hundred pages, the trailer's been kind of following it pretty good. I don't know what they're gonna do with the film. I don't even know if half the scenes they can put in a film, being that it's only rated R, because I feel like some things are not rated um, R. They're beyond that, so we'll see. Yeah, I've heard that they actually they cut out a lot of the major scenes because a lot of major scenes do revolve around very graphic things. Um, yeah. But one of seeing how it goes, I think, like I said, at the end of the day, it's it's a decent love story. And, you know, I to me, a love story is a fantasy because that's the closest thing you're going to get. Magic's just a little too far beyond yeah. me. <laughs> and I mean, when it comes down to it, this book wasn't written to be a literary book it was written to be entertainment because it did start out as a fan fiction they were entertained by this other book and they wanted to continue their entertainment and enjoyment of this fandom by writing the fan fiction and other people enjoyed that too it's it was written for entertainment not for literary value right and that's I, I know that some people feel that they don't like to read it because of the fact that it's not really well right. written but at the end of the day it's entertaining I, I consider it a comic book yeah. I mean, that's uh, comic books aren't great pieces of literature. They're just fun. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people have also been wary of this because of the subject matter of the p relationship that's in it, whether it's abusive or it's just a style of life, because it is a style of life, but perhaps this was put in an abusive form of that lifestyle. I don't know. I, I think uh, it, you th your thoughts are. It's interesting because um, E did a documentary on couples that actually do that kind of lifestyle. And yeah, like I said, it is a lifestyle. It's not just right. And it, and there's a healthy way to go about it. There is. There's a whole community backing it up, and there were couples that were healthy about it. And the whole idea of this type of relationship is all about consent. Mm -hmm. And although some people feel well, one person's consent is not the same as another person's consent. 
um, as long they do suggest like within the community that you don't just go about doing it with anybody and everyone you need to do it with someone you really care about that you really love and that you truly trust and yeah I know one couple actually their journey of um, experimenting with this lifestyle they wrote a journal and wrote what they liked and disliked and um, through there they were able to not only grow as a couple but grow as partners and they seemed pretty happy. There's also a couple that I, I feel took it a little too far. They actually have contracts and live their life like that. It, 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 mm -hmm. it, I mean, the, the male would put her on a leash to go <laughs> to the restaurant. Um, I mean, it's a lifestyle to you. choice. Kudos to you for doing but, that. I, mean, I would never do that. <laughs> I personally feel like if you're willing to do that and you have the trust, and most importantly, I think, is the communication between the two of you, yes. then it's your choice. You do you, boo boo. Yeah, just um, there. There is that fine line between it being consensual and abusive. So yes, I think that maybe this um, Fifty Shades of Grey toys with that line. Yeah, but I don't know. I haven't read the book, so I don't know. You'll have to come see the movie with Nikki and I. That's just how it goes. Yeah. So moving on from that, now this is a little off topic as far as Valentine's Day, but. On campus, we had a really awesome community service, which was on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Which we touched on in our last episode. Yes. And um, classes were canceled. Over 200 members of the campus actually came out and put together uh, 10,000 meals within two hours. And all this was found on the Heidelberg University website, heidelberg.edu. And it was really interesting because I know that Laura and I got to participate in it within mm -hmm. our Greek society. But there were members from, I believe, uh, baseball baseball and basketball. Were there, there were also just random students that showed up to help. Mm -hmm. Like people who like just saw the email that got sent out through student announcements. It's like, I would like to help. I think that's really incredible that we live, um, that we go to a school that does that. Yeah, and I think it... It's really awesome. It was, and we made the front page of the newspaper. We did. I think it was really interesting too to like see how these meals get packaged. It, it, it shocked me because this little itty bitty bag, like this, literally this big, could feed up to what six people, or it was full of six meals. I don't know. It fed it fed quite a few people in a little bag, and I was like, oh wow, that's that's a lot. There's a lot of dried dried food though, it was like dried carrots and cauliflower, and you know, I. I, I think it, it had a lot of nutritional value, and I'm glad that we were able to help people. Yeah, um, and Heidelberg does a lot with community service, and I know you, you especially do a lot with community service. You have your SMILE mentoring program mm -hmm. that you do, and I know you're always telling me about different community <laughs> service events. Yeah, uh, speaking of SMILE, actually, um, there's also another group called PACE who does kind of the same thing. They mentor children. And it's actually really cool. I know a lot of Heidelberg students are part of SMILE. Um, SMILE stands for Seneca Mentoring Youth Links. And basically you get paired up with a child of the same gender as you. And you just kind of, you know, hang out with them, kind of coach them. I know my little mentee, she is all about singing. She loves to sing. So um, typically when she comes over, we try to watch a musical or we try to bond over that. And also, you know, it you're just someone extensive to them. You don't have to necessarily be their friend because I know, you know, I'm with my cousins. I kind of look at myself as a mentor for them because they're on their phone all the time. And I'm like, okay, if I'm giving up my two hours to be with you, you need to give up two hours to be with me. So, you know, you, as far as the mentoring thing, it's kind of however your mentee um, takes you and whatever the parent wants out of you. So it's kind of interesting. You know, some people are like really close and kind of treat them like a mother child type deal and other people look at it as like oh they're my bestie and we're hanging out so I kind of take it as like a big sister role which is really what it's supposed to be is like big the big brother big sister program but meant for local it's really fun <laughs> yeah but um, there's a lot of different opportunities here at Heidelberg to do things like that mm -hmm. um, another opportunity here is the teen center um, and we actually have a guest coming in later to talk more about that Yes, um, in addition to the several students dedicate their time to the community service, today we have senior Kate Schmidt, and she'll be joining us to discuss her experience within community service, specifically at the Teen Center. So stay tuned.
All right, welcome back. With us today we have Kate Schmidt. She is a senior here at Heidelberg, and she's a public relations major and dedicates most of her time to the Teen Center here in Tiffin. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So, what all do you do at the Teen Center? Well, the Teen Center is basically operated by four Heidelberg students. We have a director, a co-director, and then two general employees. I am one of the general employees. And basically, it's an after-school facility for kids to go to who go to Tiffin Seneca schools, strictly, um, ranging from the ages of about 8 to 18. And basically, they can come there. We can help them with their homework. Uh, we have an air hockey table. We have computers. We have pool table. We have books you can check out. We've got games. Basically, we just have fun there. And it's, it's really good to have the kids in there every single day. It's normally the same kids that come. We're trying to get the word out there for more people to want to come there. But... Um, Right now, that's just kind of what we do there. Also, it is a nonprofit organization, so it's funded through Tiffin City Council, but I actually am a paid employee, so I kind of look at it as I get paid to just do what I love, and that's hang out with kids. That's awesome. So what times? Is that after school? Yeah, so it's Monday through Friday um, from 3 to 6, with the exception of Thursdays. We're open till 7, and we usually have some sort of event planned for Thursdays. So, like, for instance, last week we had um, a taco party, so we had, like, a bunch of fiesta signs and like Spanish music playing in the background. Um, we have a science day coming up. We tie-dyed t-shirts once. Every Thursday there's always something that we do and that's why we stay open an extra hour. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite memory at the Teen Center? I would have to say it's probably between two things. Um, one of them being when we opened, like the first day that we opened last semester, the four of us, we wanted to do something just to like intrigue the kids to kind of get them back in the habit of coming to the teen center because we're not open in the summer, unfortunately, because we're not at school. So we were like, we're going to act like we are in a circus and we're all going to play a part as a circus uh, person, you know, somebody who's in the circus. So I was a mime. Uh, Taylor, one of my co coworkers, was a magician. We also had a lion and then... Um, Adam Hoover, who is the director, was the bearded lady, so that was interesting. We kind of put on this whole skit thing, and the kids were laughing and giggling, and I had these mime tricks that were just, I made them up, but it worked and stuff, so that was really fun. Also, we have like a tiled ceiling, and um, we took the ceiling tiles out, and every kid had their own, and it's a very large tile, and we painted them, so everybody kind of had their own like thing, it had their name, and maybe there's a picture of a sun, or like a rainbow, or there's flowers, or some people... Um, just something that signifies them, I guess you could say. So that's really cool because whenever you walk in there, it's just a, you can see the kids that have came there and devoted their time there. That's really awesome. Yeah. And you had mentioned you plan events like weekly. Are there any events coming up? Yeah, we, so yesterday we just had kind of a chill movie day. We give them popcorn and snacks and stuff and we vote on movies and we watch that during the time. But next week we actually have our Valentine's Day dance, which I'm really Ooh. excited about. And that actually is um, operating under extended hours. It's going to be Friday night from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. So basically the girls are going to get in dresses and get dressed up and hopefully the guys will kind of do the same. And we're going to have snacks and like music playing, lights, and just kind of give them their own little dance. So I'm really excited about that. That sounds fun. Yeah. Um, I know you said that the kids are from 8 to 18. Yes. But um, what age group is there the most of? Uh, you know, it's hard. It just depends. It's inconsistent each day. It depends on who comes. There's a lot of teens that come, but then again, there's a kind of a gap. There'll be the like, teens, and then there'll be littler kids. I say 8 because that's usually what it is, but I have had some 5- and 6-year-olds come in there. Um, we try to make it more so to be a little bit older just because when you're younger, you don't necessarily know how to behave in public without your family and, or your parents monitoring you and stuff. But we will make exceptions, you know, if, if kids come in there, we'll let them hang out there and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, we got a lot of teens and we got kind of just a gap between it, you know what I'm saying? So lots of different ages. Yeah, and it, it's cool. It's varies. really cool. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you plan on doing when you graduate from Heidelberg? You know, I ask myself the same thing. Uh, well, I'm a public relations major, as she mentioned. I love kids, as I've already said, so I would love to do something maybe with a nonprofit organization. Um, I'm also really into nutrition and fitness, so I might go in down that route. I'm not really sure, but I'm sure I will find my calling, just I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So um, being that Valentine's Day is coming up, what are your plans for Valentine's Day? Well, this is really interesting, and it's so crazy. My dad, his mom, and his oldest brother all have the same birthday, which is Valentine's Day. Really? Yes. Wow. Wow. And I don't know how that worked out, but it did. So they all three share that, so we usually do something for that for my family. Uh, I also have a boyfriend, so I, I imagine we're going to go out to dinner like we usually do and just spend time together because 
It's Valentine's Day. Exactly. <laughs> so it's great. <laughs> what would be your favorite gift for Valentine's Day? Favorite gift? Oh my gosh. I don't know. I'm not really. Um, I don't really expect a lot, I guess I could say, so I'm very happy with the littlest things. Um, I like the cute stuff, anything, you know, like teddy bears or candy. I, the weight of my heart was with food. Last year I had chocolate strawberries waiting for me with a Yo. vase of roses ah. at a restaurant that ah. he I made reservations at with a sweater that he had bought me that he wanted me to wear out that he proceeded to spill his drink on while we were eating. <laughs> so it, that's just kind of our relationship. So, so I'm just really, it's more so just spending the time and just celebrating the actual holiday, but I really will take anything, I guess, <laughs> you know. Do you have a favorite Valentine's Day memory? I would have to say last year, uh, that's, you know, what we did. We went to this restaurant. I had these strawberries. I had this vase of roses waiting. I had this brand new, beautiful, like, sweater dress on. And then he reached across the table to grab something, and boom, his drink <laughs> went all over my new sweater, and the entire restaurant stared at us, and we just started laughing because we were just like, it's kind of just what you, you know, that's just how we are. And so it's great, yeah. That happens. Yeah. The story of my life. Oh, here's a beautiful date. Honey, oh, and here's my drink all over you. And here's my drink all over But you know what? That's what makes it rem yeah, memorable and everything. So. Good thing he bought the dress, you know? Yeah, it wasn't me. I was like, wasn't you did it. <laughs> yeah, so I wasn't mad, though, so it was great. <laughs> well, when we come right back, we're going to play a little game and see just how knowledgeable Kate is on her romantic movies. Oh. Hi, my name is Kayla Tidrick and I'm the Director of Wellness and Healthy Living here at the Sauerwein Health and Wellness Center on Heidelberg University's campus. This facility was made possible through the generous gift from Mary and Cliff Sauerwein. Uh, we are in a $4.3 million facility. The hours of operation are Monday through Thursday, 5.30 in the morning until 11 p.m. Fridays, 5.30 in the morning until 9 p.m. Saturdays, we are open at 9 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. And Sundays we open at noon and we close at 11 p.m. Upon entering the Sarwine Health and Wellness Center, you are generally greeted by the staff. Some of the staff's responsibility is checking in members as well as cleaning and sanitizing all of the equipment. You also notice on this floor is our fitness floor filled with our strength pieces which are, include free weights and selectorized pieces which are your machine pieces to work out with. The second floor of the Sauerwein Health and Wellness Center is our cardio floor. We currently offer 23 different pieces of cardio equipment. We have everything from treadmills to ellipticals to a climb mill. Our new pieces include a crank cycle as well as the climb mill. The Sauerwein Health and Wellness Center also offers two multi-purpose rooms. Currently the room is being housed as one giant room, however it can be split into two rooms in case two different groups want to use the room. The room is currently utilized as a free workout facility, so as far as informal recreation, it's also used for student organizations such as the dance team and hypnotic. The YMCA provides at least 15 hours of group fitness classes per semester here on campus, which include anything from yoga to Zumba to Pilates. Again, we're going to do a little trivia segment and see just how much Kate knows about her romantic movies. So are you pretty good at trivia, would you say? Do you play the, trivia, Crick? Uh, <laughs> I help. I, I seem to contribute to other people's answers more so than myself. I don't have the app, but I know somebody will be like this, and I'll be like, say the answer, and then they get it right. I'm like, wow, like maybe I'm kind of you know, good at trivia. But other than that, I mean, it depends on the subject, I guess you could say. This one, it could go either way. I could butcher it, or I could maybe... Pull it off, I don't know. <laughs> well, we believe in you, so I'm pretty confident. Especially Thank you. <laughs> if, you're pretty, if you're pretty good at entertainment, I'm sure you'll get it. Thanks. So, your first question is, in Pretty Woman, which of the following is a rule Julia Roberts' character abides by? A, never see the same man twice. B, never kiss on the mouth. C, talk to strangers, never. Or D, never answer the phone after 10 p.m. Hmm. I cannot remember directly, but I'm just going to go with D. Never answer the phone after 10 p.m.? Yes. That's your final answer? What was A again? A was never see the same man twice. No, no definitely not. That. 
Yeah, I don't know. D. All right. Unfortunately, that is incorrect. <laughs> the correct answer was B, never kiss on the mouth. And oh. she explains why she doesn't do that so she doesn't fall in love with the man. Which okay. She ends up doing it in the movie, and then she be, marries this really rich, awesome guy. I, you know, that's really a nice Cinderella story. Find it Prince is. Charming, living on the streets, you know, same, same thing as sleeping after a fireplace. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, a new Cinderella movie. Oh my gosh. Have yes, you seen that? Yeah. I have. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't either. Nothing really can just compare to the original. I'm such an original, like, the, all the first movies, and then there's like second and thirds and fourths and fifths. Like, I don't watch those. I miss like that movie. Yes. It I, either needs to be the animated version or the musical. Don't try to take the animated and make it real. Yes. It's yes. I agree. I think what bothers me about it is the fact that she's clearly not a blonde, but they dyed her hair blonde, and it's just, it's so obvious. Yes, it's not natural. Me. It's just like, in the cartoon, she's just so pure and And I mean, where does it even say Cinderella has to be blonde? Exactly. Oh, that's my issue with it. <laughs> okay. okay. I need so, redemption right now. <laughs> yes. In 50 First Dates, why is Tom known as 10 Second Tom? Is it A, because of how fast he can chug a root beer, B, because of the time it takes him to change a tire, C, because of how long his short-term memory lasts, or D, because of the time it takes to recite the 50 states. Let's go with, I'm trying to use the method of elimination here, you know, it's like a, like <laughs> a final, a test, yeah. Uh, I'm going to eliminate C and D, I believe. Okay, so you don't think it's because of the time he takes to recite the 50 states, or because of how long his short-term memory is. I don't think I haven't. I don't know if I've seen that movie all the way through. I know Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler in it because they're great, yeah. but I can't remember. Um, and what were the first two again? Sorry. Um, because of how fast he can chug a root beer, or because of the time it takes him to change a tire. Do you need a quote hint? Yes, please. Hi, I'm Tom. That was a great quote. To say his name. Is there an option about saying no. his name? Hi, I'm Tom. Her, what were the her, options again? Can you say the options again? Can you say A and B, please? A and B. Okay. A is how fast he can chug a root beer, and B is of the time um, it takes him to change a tire. And then C, C was, was because of how long his short-term memory lasts. Hi, I'm Tom. Okay, C. Yeah. Let's go with C. <laughs> <It's> C. <laughs> and I eliminated that one. Yeah, I'm I'm butchering it. I got three more though, so I sh I should be able to maybe get one, right? Well, then he just got one <laughs> yeah. with a lot of help. Yes, <laughs> with a lot of help. <laughs> Uh, we we allow some lifelines. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Can I phone a friend real quick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Our next question is, in Never Been Kissed, what was Drew Barrymore's nickname in high school? Either A, Gnarly Nancy. Josie Grossy. Or C, Josie Grossy. Yes, I got that one. <laughs> yeah. See, you got this. You got yes. full three. You're doing good. Okay. In Pretty in Pink. Who is Andy in love with? Ducky or Blaine? Blaine. Yes. Yes! <laughs> I love Molly Ringwald. I'm such like a fan of her in like The Breakfast Club and uh, Pretty in Pink. And she was also in this movie called Four Keeps. I don't know if you saw it. It was like an early 80s movie and I'm in love with it. Well, she's so. obsessed with 80s movies. So she would be yeah. the one to, it's, would, it's a you problem. can talk to her yeah. about that. That's awesome. <laughs> it's a good era to be obsessed with. It really is. I, I wish I lived in the 80s. I truly do. When my mom tells me about like, her life and just like, I don't know, just back then it just seems so cool. And I love their yeah. style and everything, which is actually kind of has like came back yeah, it's and stuff. Back. So yeah. yeah, I appreciate it. I miss the shoulder pads. I don't think those are. Kind of <laughs> no, definitely not. I do wish John Hughes directed my life because I feel like things work out. Directed <laughs> your life? Yes, yes. Unfortunately, we don't get directors in life though. So. <laughs> I, I have to figure it out myself. All right. And our last question is: What movie was the famous quote? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. From Wizard of Oz, Gone with the Wind, Breakfast Club, or Valentine's Day? Hmm. I don't think it was the Wizard of Oz. If I mean, I don't care. Maybe, maybe it is. My dear is what makes me think it might be that. Um, I haven't seen Gone with the Wind, so I have no idea. I have not seen Valentine's Day. And what was C? Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club, oh. Direct quotes from the Breakfast Club. Well, you said you're a big fan of the Breakfast Club. I was. I am. I know. So I should know. I don't. 
Yeah, I'm going to go with the Breakfast Club. Is that it? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. The correct answer was actually Gone with the Wind. Oh. This quote specifically, um, most people may not know what movie it comes from, but it's actually pretty famous. As far as I know that my mother and I sit there and watch the film for four hours oh just to see Rhett Butler turn around. Film. It is, but it's so good. Rhett Butler at the end of the movie, um, basically the story is this guy is just madly in love with Scarlett O'Hara, and she's just... She's just doing her, <laughs> and she's kind of being herself. So at the end of the movie, he's just like, you know what? I'm I'm done. I'm done trying to be with you, and that's why he says, frankly, my dear, I don't give, give a, a damn. damn. I got gotcha. you. I just it. I knew it was a book, and I heard it was a movie. I just haven't seen it, so I was just like, maybe it's a direct quote from The Breakfast Club, but <laughs> probably gonna get it wrong like I did. I so. actually that was a good guess because honestly, I um I would have figured that the What's the one character, the bad boy? That's what I was picturing. Yeah, that's exactly what I was picturing. Like saying that. That. Yeah, that's why I was picturing it, because there's kind of that, like, sexual tension between him and uh, Molly Ringwald during that movie. Yeah. So that's why I figured, I was like, maybe it slipped in there somewhere, but <laughs> all right, interesting, interesting. All right, well, we really appreciate having you here with us, Kate. Thank you. And I believe you got three out of five questions correct? Yeah. All right, I so, can deal with that. So <laughs> 60%. Ah, uh, that doesn't sound as good. Three out of five sounds a little better. Okay. <laughs> you passed. Yes, you passed. yes, you passed. Yeah. All right. And, you know, like I said, some of the, the movies, I unless you really know them, you probably weren't going to get them. Exactly, anyway. yeah. But, yeah, that is all we have today. So, I'm Haley. I'm Laura. And we'll see you next time on Inside at the Berg.